Hello there and welcome back to the Scott Reed Project and today we're doing that traditional Scottish favourite haggis and what I've got on here I know it looks like the remnants of a slaughterhouse are sheep's plucks or lamb's races whatever you want to call it now these come all connected as you can see we got the liver we got the lungs this one was not a smoker we got the heart and the trachea now what we're going to be using is just the liver, the lungs and the heart and if it had the tongues we would be using the tongues as well. I mean a lot of old school recipes they put bits of the trachea in, I'm not going to do that, I want to keep it pure, I want to keep it clean. So what we need to do then is basically just break these beauties down. This is another one of those dishes you know where you're taking much underused cuts, I suppose some bits you would throw away really and making something amazing from so i'm going to just put that over there a minute just gonna cut off the liver knife needs to sharpen and then take the heart just cut him close by and then we are just going to take these lungs off so with the lungs then just either side of the trachea. I mean, you can put that in if you want to, but like I said, I want to keep it clean, pure. Look at that. All I'm going to do into decent sized chunks because we need to boil this, cook it off first, put it in that bowl over there. I got these from a very good friend of mine, a Mr. Tallis, a butcher in Pershaw. He got these for me. And they cost very, very little. So, same with the liver. I mean, you can put them in whole if you want. Just to speed up the process. Get it in my bowl. Just taking off any undesirable bits, any pipes. But, you know, it's quite simple to do. And with the heart going to trim that off give that a quick wash out I mean you can prepare a salt solution to put these in just some salt and some water and let them rest in there for a couple of hours and that will clean all the rubbish out of them that's quite a clean one so I shall swill that then all the clots out and we'll get them in a pot boiling away so there's our sheep's put then all cut up ready to go into our container of boiling water yes it looks like the aftermath of a motley crew video but this is where the artisan butcher again comes into his own turns these what some people might think is undesirable bits into something absolutely fantastic so into my pot then they go we're going to cook them check them in about 45 minutes an hour but all together that lot weighed six pounds and we can get on and get our other ingredients together not the most glamorous pot of stuff i have had on my stove i admit but you've got to think of the bigger picture so i think i'll top that with a little bit more water get the lid on and we'll come back to it so there you go my sheep's pluck has been boiling for 45 minutes to an hour as you can see it's all nicely cooked granted it's not the most glamorous looking thing at the moment but what we need to do let that cool and get it through the mincer and in the meantime my other ingredients before we make up the seasoning a pound of ground suet two decent sized onions and there we have three pounds of scotch oats you can use any oats you want to but preferably pinhead or a fine one so I'm going to get the mincer set up as you can see then just sent that liver heart and lungs through the mincer next I am going to quickly mince my two big onions into that right that's my onions mixed just get our hands in just think of nice things when you're doing this think of the bigger picture and then to that, next in 
with my pound of suet. Give that a mix and then we will transfer it to a bigger container into my a big bowl. Let's get our minced onions and meats into that. Our three pound of oats. Now what I did is I reserved the stock or the liquor from cooking off the offal and we will add some of that to this but first I want to show you the seasoning but that smells haggisy is that a word haggisy or is he a tennis player either way it's top job here is the seasoning mix and what I've got is three ounces of fine salt one and a half ounces of white pepper and I've just put about half an ounce or a good couple of pinches of mace what I'm going to do nice and evenly just sprinkle it onto our mix and give that a preliminary mix up to my mix, one and a half pints of the stock that the pluck was cooked in. Get that in. Now we give it a decent mix. Check the consistency. Make sure all the seasoning's got in. But when you think of what we started with and what we got here, as you can see, it's starting to come together. And the smell is fantastic. Have a look at that, eh? Well, it is then get your hands in and give it a good mix and we will prepare our casing obviously you could buy synthetic casing or the old traditional lamb's stomach but I'm actually using beef bungs today but that oh man is a million miles away from what we started with what I may do is just add a dash of lemon juice. Right, I've got my mix in my sausage machine ready to go. We are going to be piping them into these beef bungs. These, as you can see, quite a big casing. What we need to do, just pipe away. And they'll take quite a stuff in these. But the trick is not to stuff them too tight. You don't want these bad boys bursting. There is one. Haggai. So we're just going to leave a handful in between. So I've tied the one off. I'm going to leave a bit... So I can cut through and start the next one. You want these nice and tight. And I can just cut through there. And there we have. With a little bit of space for expansion. One haggis. Right. I should pipe the rest of them. And we'll start cooking them off. So there you go then. There's my six haggis. And as you can see, where I've tied in between each one, real strong knots. I'm just going to cut through. And I've left the string long on each end so we can tie them off and get them out of the pot. But there we have six haggis. Now we just need to cook them. Right, to cook the old haggai, I have got a pot of it's not even simmering water really I suppose it's 180 degrees Fahrenheit and you want to keep it at 180 or below we don't want these bursting but the trick is as you can see I left quite a bit of space they're about three quarters full and all we're gonna do as you can see you left the strings on so I can get them out is put them in 
and I reckon these are about a pound. Some of them might be about a pound and a quarter, so I'm reckoning about an hour to cook, but keep an eye on that temperature. Mine's actually reading at the moment 181, so once these have settled in, if it gets too hot, just add a little bit of cold water, half a cup or whatever, but just keep it in a constant 180, I think. I don't know if you can see on there. 180 that was. We'll check on those in an hour. Okay, these little beauties, they've been in for an hour and a half. As you can see, they're floating. What we need to do then, take them out of there and immediately put them into a bowl of ice cold water. Then we may crack one open. Just like being in a sauna. Out of one, into the other. Look at those. A million, million miles away from where we started. It just goes to show what can be done with a little bit of skill. So normally then, you would let these cool completely, but not on the Scott Reed project. We're going to crack into one. have a look at that hey now that is a haggis it's a bit extravagant I know straight out of the cooker mmm oh man spot on I mean obviously you let these cool down let them mature they'll be better the next day heat them back up but I tell you what that is stunning so there you go my friends traditional Scottish haggis and if you've liked what you've seen here today on the Scott Reed Project, please subscribe to the channel. I release a video every week. Also, find me on Facebook at Scott Reed or the Scott Reed Project. If you want to ask any questions, go on to Messenger. You know, we can talk one to one. And also on my Twitter account at Scott Reed Project up there. So until next time, my friends, give this a go. I've got a few dishes in my mind what I want to do with these now they're cooked. So that'll be a later video. But thanks for watching. All the best.